Some weapons must remain in the shadows. And no, we're not talking about secret laser projects or nuclear warheads. We mean the Patriot air defense system, so critical that Ukrainians seriously hesitate before every launch. And it's not just about the missile count. The real reason? Well, that's where things get interesting. Ukraine is the only country that uses the Patriot like this. No one else has had this many engagements and confirmed kills in just two years. That's why Ukrainians know more about this system than anyone else, and have already learned how to surprise the enemy. Take May 4th, 2023, for example. Patriot made history by shooting down a Russian Kinzhal missile, the so-called unstoppable hypersonic weapon Moscow had been bragging about. From that moment on, it became clear, Patriot is Ukraine's shield, capable of stopping even ballistic and hypersonic missiles, and it looks like Russia is in for many more disappointments. So what's the problem then? You might rightfully be wondering. Let's look at a real case. On May 6, 2023, Russia launched six Kinjals at Kiev, trying to take out a Patriot battery. Every single missile was intercepted. Yay! Nay, Ukraine had to burn through a significant number of high-cost Pac-3 interceptors, leaving its stockpile dangerously low. As a result, the capital of Europe's largest country was left temporarily exposed to further attacks. And that's not even the worst part. The biggest challenge comes with massive combined assaults, when the enemy launches different types of missiles alongside kamikaze drones, forcing air defenses to operate at their absolute limit. Every time ballistic and hypersonic missiles approach Ukraine during these attacks, Patriot is the last line of defense. But by the end of these engagements, a critical issue emerges. How fast can allies replenish the missile stockpile? Why don't Ukrainians just buy more missiles themselves? Technically, they could. But the real problem lies elsewhere. Pac-3 MSE missiles are extremely complex to manufacture. These high-tech interceptors are produced by Lockheed Martin, and it can take over a year to build just one. Even the U.S. has a limited stockpile because Patriot remains NATO's primary air defense system. Here, it's worth noting that the Patriot is one of the most expensive air defense systems in the world. A single battery costs around $1 billion. Currently, the U.S. can produce around 500 Pac-3 MSC missiles per year. But they're in high demand, not just for Ukraine, but for many other countries, making them difficult to acquire even with funding. That's why Ukraine is relying on additional air defense systems to back up the Patriot. Systems like NASAMS. The Norwegian Advanced Surface-to-Air Missile System is unique because it was the first to use the network-centric warfare concept. This means it can connect with radars, fighter jets, and other defense systems, making it an essential part of Ukraine's multi-layered air defense. NASAMS is highly effective against cruise missiles, drones, and aircraft. In Ukraine, it has nearly a 100% success rate making it a vital shield for the country's skies. Worth a like, don't you think? Everything happens super fast. You just tap the target on the screen, either with your fingers or a mouse cursor. Anything that enters this sector gets taken down automatically. On December 29, 2023, NASAMS played a key role in defending Kiev from the largest missile attack on the city, shooting down dozens of incoming threats. This is possible thanks to its advanced electronics. It's a regular radar but upgraded. Inside, it has computers which also act as a control hub. However, NASAMS has a weakness. It can't stop ballistic or hypersonic missiles. AIM-120 missiles used by NASAMS fly at around 3,044 miles per hour, while Russia's Kinzhal missile reaches over 7,450 miles per hour. NASAMS also has limited range and altitude. It can engage targets up to 25 miles, while ballistic missiles drop from over 60 miles. That's why only Patriots can handle these high-speed threats. But even NASAMS is in short supply in Ukraine. So much so that some regions still rely solely on Soviet-era systems. More on that later. Ukraine also has lesser-known air defense systems. For example, the Crotal ng Rattlesnake is a short-range mobile air defense system developed by the French company Thales Group. Ukraine received this system recently, and let's be honest, most people have never even heard of it. But you can know more if you hit that subscribe button right now. Crotal NG is designed to intercept cruise missiles, planes, helicopters, and drones. It's an absolute champion in reaction time, detecting, tracking, and shooting down a target in under five seconds. However, France only sent two of these systems, making them more of a test run in combat than a real defensive asset for a large city. And now, let's talk about one of the most reliable systems in Ukraine's skies. 
The Iris T SLM is a true workhorse in protecting Ukrainian cities. This system was only completed in 2014, and Ukraine became its first operator, even before the German military got it. The Russia-Ukraine war became its real battlefield test. The first units arrived in Ukraine in October 2022. Iris T missiles are twice as cheap as NASAMs and 10 times cheaper than Patriot. But here's the problem. Iris T actually has a higher success rate against cruise missiles than NASAMs, but when waves of drones attack, its resources get drained too fast. That's where another German system steps in, the Gepard. This is a universal self-propelled anti-aircraft gun. It targets planes, helicopters, Shahed drones, and even cruise missiles. Using 35mm rounds, this system is a nightmare for Iranian Shahed drones. The Gepard's targeting system is highly efficient, with some targets going down in just two or three shots. It has two onboard radars that can detect and track incoming threats early, helping to conserve ammunition. However, its performance can be affected by bad weather or nighttime conditions. Still, in Ukraine, Gepard is one of the most effective systems against drones, and no overview of Ukraine's air defense would be complete without Soviet-era systems. The exact number of these systems is classified, but even combined with Western equipment, Ukraine still doesn't have enough to fully secure its airspace. These Soviet systems played a massive role in the first days of the invasion and they continue to perform at full capacity today. For example, the S-125, a Soviet mid-range air defense system, was a backbone of Ukraine's air defense. This system has been in service since 1961, and many of its missiles are 40 to 50 years old. The biggest drawback of the S-125 is that it can only track one target at a time, while modern systems can lock onto dozens. This makes massive missile attacks a major challenge for S-125 batteries. Still, despite its technological limitations, this system has shown impressive results. Over Odessa alone, the S-125 has taken down dozens of Russian missiles and drones. Another Soviet-era air defense system still in use by Ukraine is the S-300. Ukrainian specialists have enhanced its effectiveness, improving its ability to detect and destroy Kaliber and KH-101 missiles. During massive Russian missile strikes, S-300 crews have intercepted a significant number of threats. For example, Senior Lieutenant Makita and his team shot down 15 missiles in 90 minutes. Meanwhile, Captain Maxim Shogolev from an Odiza-based air defense brigade reported over 50 enemy targets destroyed, including 31 aircraft, among them Su-35 fighters and the Il-22 Airborne Command Post. The S-300 remains one of the primary shields of Ukraine's skies. However, sourcing missiles for it is becoming increasingly difficult, and Western systems have yet to fully replace it. And then there's one of Ukraine's best-kept air defense secrets. Who exactly supplied the Soviet-era S-200 system that took down the rare A-50A WAX plane? and the strategic Tu-22 M3 bomber? The S-200 is the only Soviet-designed system capable of hitting large aircraft, like strategic bombers, at distances of up to 186 miles. Officially, the last S-200 systems were retired in 2013, and as of the A-50 strike, there were supposedly none left in Ukraine. Ukraine's air defense is not only one of the most versatile, but also one of the most battle-tested in the world. Whenever a component is missing, Ukrainians find a workaround to keep their skies protected. No missiles. Deploy the Gepards. No Gepards. Fine. Send helicopters into the sky and shoot down Shahids with machine guns. Yes, you've probably seen the videos. Looks like something out of Hollywood, except it's all happening in real life. The Mi-17s, Czech supplied Mi-24s, and Ukraine's own Mi-8s have all been seen blasting drones out of the sky with nose-mounted guns. True ingenuity in action. Despite these creative solutions, Ukraine faces a daily struggle. There simply aren't enough launchers or missiles to stop every threat to its cities and infrastructure. Even purchasing new missiles isn't enough to fully meet demand. Since the full-scale invasion began, Russia has launched around 9,000 missiles at Ukraine. If every single one were intercepted using MIM-104 Patriot missiles, it would cost $27 billion, and that's assuming a 100% hit rate, and that's just the Russian missiles. Another major challenge is coordination and access to advanced technology. With so many different air defense systems, aircraft, and mobile units in use, organizing them efficiently is a logistical nightmare, one that costs precious time. The U.S. has solutions that could help. For example, one of Patriot's biggest flaws is that its radar only covers a 120-degree field of view. This led to the development of a Franken-SAM hybrid, 
combining Patriot launchers with Soviet or Ukrainian-built radars. Meanwhile, the U.S. is testing and preparing to deploy the LTAMDS radar, which offers a full 360-degree view and has already been approved for sale to Poland. This radar could even detect Putin's so-called Oreshnik stealth missiles. Ukraine is eager to buy this radar as well, but so far there's no news on a sale or transfer. Overall, every single air defense system Ukraine has received is doing its job. Their crews are on duty day and night, keeping the skies safe. And no matter how difficult the task, their efforts deliver real results. Hopefully in the coming years, Ukraine will secure full air superiority, either independently or with the continued support of its allies. But for now, Western air defense systems and missiles remain critical. Which air defense system do you think is the most effective in Ukraine's skies? Patriot? Iris-T? Nasums? Or do you have another pick? Let us know in the comments.